welcome back to another episode of Arch and Crafts with Mike. We are going to go over the question of how do you sharpen the MDV. Uh, it is a uh, chisel grind and it is a drop point recurve. Okay, uh, so sharpening this tends to intimidate some people, even if they have a little bit of uh, a background in it. So what I did was uh, instead of me sharpening it and talking to you guys about it, I went to the guy that I have sharpened all my blades, uh, which is Javen Roberts. He is the owner and the uh, main man at Gray's Customs. And so you guys have probably seen his work. It is masterful if you want an heirloom type blade or if you want a blade that someone would be honored to die by, then I would uh, buy one of his blades. They are obviously more expensive, but he does everything from the ground up uh, custom. He is a true master of his craft. So what I wanted is I wanted him to cover how he would sharpen this because he was integral to the design of the uh, edge and everything that goes into it. And so he had a few ways to do that, that start at the beginner level and then goes through. So uh, let's take a look at what we talked about. I know it's not the optimal thing, but these hunting stones yes. or uh, rods, um, just as a easy way for like the kitchen knives or, you know, even with like the MDV folder, it doesn't, it doesn't actually have the same kind of um, recurve. Right, right. Right. So like this is almost a, a similar edge all the way around. Yeah. Uh, so something like this, would it be okay if they had the proper angle on this? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, because yeah, yeah. I want to give them more, more than one option. Yeah, yeah. Right? Um, I mean, it's 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 better than trying to do it on a square stone because... You just got to work on the edge. All, all the square stone's going to do until you... If you had a square stone and you work that square stone over and over again, you're going to cut a radius on it, and then it'll be good. But to start with, if you're chasing the edge, so what you're going to do is you're going to create like steps. So this edge is going to like hunt along the along the edge, so you're going to almost get like a nice stagger instead of a finish. But eventually, the more you work that edge, you're going to create a radius, which then will give you like that nice clean. Edge, which is where the radius stones and the, the round ones are great because you already have the, the radius you're working with. Right. Okay. But yeah, like um, the honing stones are, the round ones are good. So you can make yourself just like some simple guides if you're doing stuff by hand. Okay. Just to, just to give yourself a feel. Let's say we do uh, like 20 degrees. So that would give us All right, so super simple to give yourself a reference, but then when you're all like to say you're setting up to sharpen with one of these, gives you a nice, just so you can get the feel, right? Ah, uh, okay. And then I'd get rid of that, but it, it gives me that initial, like that's my 20 degrees. So what I'm trying to do is like, fix as many elements of sharpening as we can. Right. Because unless you've done it for, you know, you watch the chefs on these and it's so fast, <laughs> right. but it, it's, it's years of repetition that, that gets that. So I would make myself a little guide. And when I use these, I hold them square, square to this because I don't use them enough to, to be great freehand. Right. So I'd hold this one, I'd get my little angle set there. 
That gives me my feel. And by fixing this one, you see, if I do this, everything's floating. Right. So there's there's too many there's too many elements where I can create error. Whereas I like to hold these firm. You can fix your angle and just just draw up that one like that. And so we can do the same on the other side without fixing it. Okay. And so you uh, start with the uh, that uh, knurling side first uh, and then go to the flat side? It depends on uh, depends on where your edge is. You can feel that was actually pretty sharp already. It depends on where your edge is. If you're just trying to like gently bring the edge up, then I'd go straight to your straight to your high finish edge. Okay. Whereas if you're trying to get like a chip or a ding out, then go with your go with your rough edge and then then progress over. Okay. And so I saw that you stopped uh, basically where the recurve starts. Yes. Right? Uh, and so that you would just redo that from yeah, I, point. I would sharpen these in two sections just because it's much easier to follow that radius than now right. trying to follow all the way around. So because resharpening a radius tends to be trickier, I, I personally would break them down into two sections of sharpening. Right. So I'd resharpen the, the recurve. Mm -hmm. And then if I had a flat stone or something, then I'd come in and I'd, uh, I'd get the, right. the radius up and to the tip. Is, are those going to be easier to sharpen than, say, the MDV, which is a chisel grind? Or do you believe that it's... Well, first off, the chisel, the the edge on the MDV is, is obviously um, a little bit different. That's yeah. why we have those stones. But let's say if you had a normal chisel grind that was just a straight edge. Yeah. Um, is that going to be harder to do on these or easier? Should it be a flat stone? It should be exactly the same. Sharpen, okay. sharpen, and sharpen. The only thing that will change is, is your angle. Because kind of on a chisel, all your sharpen angle tends to be on one side. Right. Because you're, you're creating this as opposed to this. Right. And then uh, you finish it by going on the flat side. As flat as possible, yeah. So if this is a chisel grind, I would come in and sharpen this side. And then because I'm going to create a burr that's going the other way, I just want to come as flat as possible and just knock that burr off. Right. Okay. No, that makes sense. Yeah. But yeah, for me, like repeating myself on this one, but as many elements as I can fix is going to make my life so much easier. Is there a reason why I would have both of these honing rods? So like it's supposed to be one's a honing rod and then one is if you needed to really grind down on it. Good. Yeah. Yeah. So you rough a one, Again, if you've got like a little chip or a ding you're trying to remove, you want to remove that with as aggressive a stone as you can get away with. Because if you try doing that with a thousand grit stone, you're going to be there for hours and hours on end. Right. So I would use like, a, if I'm just trying to touch the edge up, like it's it's still sharp, but it, it needs to go a little higher. I would use like the, the high finishing stones. Okay. Yeah, it's because it, it goes... Um 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 on these. Right. Is is there really that much of a difference between those that you would have both or would you try to find something that would be in a, like an 800 range? I think for, I think you're getting up to three, 4,000 area mm -hmm. is, is real fine tuning. I mean, um, when I sharpen, I sharpen to 400 grit and then I just, I finish with a leather strop. Okay. Um, sometimes I will go all the way up, but it tends to, you're getting a finer and finer edge. Um, when you freehand sharpen, I would like 1,000, 2,000, plenty of edge on it. So the, the reason that I bought these is because um, uh, just his family bought all of the kitchen knives right, right. and they use them all the time. And so every Christmas I have to sharpen <laughs> their knives and I'm like, oh, you know, Maybe maybe we could provide something where I don't have to do it every single time. Teach, teach a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know. Um, would that help or work for those knives absolutely. better? Yeah, um, absolutely. You know, because I don't I don't feel like I need to get the the big monstrosity out every single right. year to do that if, if they're honing them. Yeah, yeah. And these would work great for kitchen knives. And the same thing. I'd fix it, choose your angle, and then either draw up or draw down on it just to just to create that. And then when you get happy with it, you can start doing like the. Right. Do your core grind if you think. Yeah, yeah, but that's 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 years of doing yeah. it every day. He's right? like just so he's so angle, fast. Yeah, your angle is fixed. Everything's. Yeah. But yeah, for me, it's I would say the more things I can fix, Makes so sense. I'm not floating around. Because like this, if this one goes this way and this one goes this way, I'm doing a bigger angle. Okay, if this yeah. one comes this way and. So I'm messing with my angles all the time. That makes sense.
because angle, it's the rep the repetition of angle. So that's where like having a little guide like this is so useful, even, you know, even just a little cardboard one, because even when I'm coming to do the tip, I set my angle, now I can feel that one, and then I can draw back. And that's how I break this one into two sections. I sharpen this and then sharpen, and then blend that one across. Just to, for me, it's, um, it's how I sharpen on the belt as well. I, if I've got a recurve, I'll sharpen the recurve, and then I'll sharpen the tip because I don't want to try and flow, flow that complex line. That's a lot of muscle memory to remember. Yeah. And then well, what I'm I do possible. is I do the, do the recurve, then I do the tip, and then I'll do one pass and blend them all together. So you don't end up with a blend mark. Yeah. That makes sense. But just, just for me. And that's just a real light pass then. Yeah, yeah. And it's just when I've got my burr and I go up to a higher belt, then I'll, I'll do some blending passes with the belts. But everybody buying these 800 and 1,000 grit stones, couldn't people just have like a 400 grit stone that would cut really fast? 400. They'd get less frustrated and they would do a great job. Yeah. So 400 grit and then like use a leather strop or something to remove your burr. So take your belt off and flick the belt yeah. back. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so uh, obviously I haven't been officially trained in sharpening what what is the first off what's the danger in sharpening it on the stone and not using the leather strop and then what is the uh reason that i hear people say that you have to destroy yeah. okay so and this is just my thoughts and opinions there may be people out there who tell who are like, oh, no, that's not right. But that's all I care about, so. But there isn't anybody in the building right now that knows more about sharpening. So. Well, correct. Like, you, and you, you're the guy that I go to, so. There's nobody within the circle of people I know, of the many thousand that I know that knows how to sharpen. I think that's just repetition, making mistakes, and right. trial and error. It's it's no over and over and over. Exactly. It's no different, right? It's, it's right. just that. Find the mistakes. Yep. Fix the mistakes. So when you sharpen, so this is my tip. Mm -hmm. When I sharpen one side, what I do is I leave a burr. Right. Okay. And that's when I'm sharpening. That's what I want to. That's what I want to achieve on my first passes. Is when I'm sharpening on my belts. What I do is I go and go until I see a burr on the whole edge. So what I'm trying to do is create a, an infinite edge here. So I don't want to flat. I want this to like infinitely be be pointing. I know I've achieved that when I throw the burr over. Okay. Now when I sharpen the other side, I throw a burr over again. So what the what the leather strop does is because it's it's not aggressively removing the material, it knocks my burrs off. Oh, so so sharpening one side and then sharpening the other side doesn't remove the burr. Remove no, the you, burr. Just, you just flash the burr back over again. Okay. So for, so, for me, like stropping um, or finishing with a super high stone uh -huh. will help remove that burr. And you can feel it when you, when you run the knife through paper. You can feel like sometimes it's got that jaggedness and yeah. you know it's sharp, but it's jagged. And all you're feeling is that tiny, tiny burr that's wrapping over. Right. And it'll feel, um, you'll feel the blade on one side and it'll be like, oh, that's crazy sharp. And then the other side feels dull and all you're doing is catching your skin on the burr on one side and then you're rolling off the burr on the other. And so that's uh, eliminated through a leather strop only or a leather strop and a super high grit? You can, you can go super high grit. I've seen people have a piece of plastic and they drag the knife through a piece of plastic, which, because the burr is so fine, it will drag the burr clear, but my personal preference is my leather belt. Just to, or you can do, um, that's what I've got. So I've got, um, uh, this is kind of deviating, but you've got uh, like the leather. So that's, a, that's another great way to remove like your bird. This is a, a leather wheel with buffing compound in it. Oh, okay. Or a, or a felt wheel or, or a piece of felt, but just something to, to knock that bird. And you wouldn't need this machine. No, you, you would just need that. Yeah, yeah, just that, or like a just a piece of leather to drag it down. Or... Okay, awesome. Or a super high grit stone, and just do a couple of fine passes, just to just to remove that burr. So what's a super high grit stone? Uh, a thousand grit to two thousand grit, maybe. Oh, okay. So very high. 
So basically what we have up here. Yes. Yeah, so you could... Um, so these aren't really for sharpening, they're, they're just, you know... They're honing stones. So the edge is already created and this just, just helps reform that edge. Okay. So, so is there a reason why you would have to do it a lot? Like, you should just do it, like, probably once or twice, Just right? a couple of passes until you feel your edge come in. Yeah, you don't want to overwork. So here's the other thing that happens when you sharpen. Every time you sharpen, you walk... Um, so this is your... If this is like your knife edge. Mm -hmm. So every time I sharpen, I walk this edge back. So I'm shortening the life expectancy of the knife every time I sharpen. So if I over-sharpen... I am slowly diminishing the life expectancy of my life because I'm walking that, that edge closer and right. closer to the spine. So, so even though it, it feels cool to do it, yeah, yeah. Uh, you, they don't need to be doing that every single time that they pull out their, their no. kitchen knives, right? Like no, th no. this is after a couple months worth of, hey, this isn't as sharp as it used to be. Yeah. I'm just going to hone it a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Because if they do it every day, like, because on the shows, it seems like that's what they do. They, they just go yeah. at it and it's like if that actually grinds down the knife's lifespan then yeah. you know you'd yeah. be killing your knives after a while yeah yeah because you're slowly just walking you're walking this edge further and further back towards the spine and you're getting into so if there's your bevel angle mm -hmm. each time i walk back and back into a thicker thicker part of the bevel so then my sharpen edge gets bigger and bigger and bigger so it's okay yeah now that's all great information yeah it's just things i think about Stuff. No, it, it's it's stuff that's actually not it's not super difficult to find online. It's just they're, it's confusing yes. because when one person talks about it, I'm like, okay, I got it, and then I'll listen to another video, and then I'm like, that actually almost contradicts what this guy's saying. Yeah, I I don't have a universal, you know, this is what you should do. Data, yeah. You know, um, so yeah. So the other thing, like, and when we're talking about like the different grits. So when you when you look at an edge through um, through magnification, what we have is lots of teeth. Yes. So if this is like your this is like your two twenty, this will be like your four forty, and then when you're getting into the two thousand, you're getting smoother and smoother. But sometimes small teeth are great, right? Because they they grab and they cut, and as long as I flash those burrs off, it, it's great. Right. So I've done it before. Where I've done a one hundred and twenty grit on one side and then polished into it on the other. So you kind of have like aggressive teeth with micro <laughs> and it makes for a scary cutting edge. So that, that actually brings up another question that I was thinking about. So like on my, um, I forgot what it's called, the, the one that we um, advise people to grab, um, the one that does it on both sides. Yeah. Um, anyways, I have stones ranging from 80 all the way up to like, 4,000 or something like yeah, that. Yeah. I don't need to go 80, then 120, then 300, then 400, then do 1,000, yeah. then 2,000, then three. Like, that's not how that process works? No. So if you already have an edge, right, and all you're trying to do is touch it up, I would be coming at around 400 grit just to, just to touch it up. The 80 for me is if you're trying to... Um, so if I, if I already have a... So where I start is I have a flat. Right. So I'm not just sharpening, I'm creating the edge. Exactly. So if you've got this and you have a flat on it, then I would come in with like an 80 or a 120 to, to create the edge and then move on. Whereas if I already have an edge, what I want to do is just just clean the, clean the edge up because I've probably created some little flats on there for use. And right. So well, yeah, I would come in at like 220, 440 just to, just to create that edge again. Okay. Yeah, and so I don't have to. So that that was one of the things that obviously I've been doing wrong is I they gave you all these stones and I was like, so you have to go all the way up right. until it gets to like four thousand, and then that's when it's finished. Yeah, and it takes forever, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah, and it depends on kind of what sort of edge you're after. You know, I like um, I say like on on my more production knives, I do four forty and then leather strop. Um, on like my signature stuff, I go up to. 2,000 grit and, and then strop. Right. I like for around 440 for me is gives you that nice, you know, you've got those little teeth there and you can feel like that, that little grip to it. Okay. Makes sense. Yeah. Uh, is there anything special on our MDVs that 
um, we should focus on as far as grit and that type of thing? I mean, um, I know we're going to work on these stones once they're done. But yeah, like, yeah. Um, I wouldn't. Like, so the higher I try to go, and the more times I visit, the more times I visit the stone, the more chances of error there is. The more chances I got my angle wrong, and I, you know, I've knocked my edge off. Mm -hmm. So, for me, it's like decide decide on what edge you want, and then do as little as possible to get there. Right. So I don't sound dumb. Um, the higher grit you go, it doesn't mean it's going to be sharper. Or is it like? Yes, because you're getting finer and finer teeth. Um, what really defines your sharpness, though, is uh, your sharpening angle. Correct. Because right. I'm because I want to be like as as close to an infinite edge as possible. So the higher grit I get, the closer I get to infinite, because I get smaller and smaller okay. teeth along that. Right. Um, but you still like let's say like I've done some. You know, you can do some aggressive sharpening. As long as you remove the burr, you still get a incredibly functional edge. Correct. And so the, the higher grit you go, let's, let's just say I go all the way, you know, to 4,000 grit, and it's, it's really, really sharp. By doing that, does it reduce the durability of that edge because it's so thin at the top now? Like there's, there's not as, or as, do you stay at 400 because it, it has edge, mate? it maintains its edge longer like, is, is there even a factor on that? I understand that's metal, but like... So, so my thinking would be the, the finer you go, the better it will hold the edge for longer, I would think. Because if you imagine if I've got all these little teeth, and then this, it's easier to knock these teeth off. Right. Then it is a true edge. So I would... Okay. And I'm just like, it's not something I've really considered until you ask the question, but in my head, like the higher grit I go, which means that this edge is getting truer and truer and truer. It has more support and it's less likely to knock those little teeth out. So with, unless you hit something like bone, yeah. you, would, you would be fine. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And that's just, like, it's not a question I'd actually thought about. Yeah, it's like, yeah that's, a, that's why I'm here. <laughs> There's things they don't tell you about, like fixing your points, right? It's just like, oh, pick your angle and and go at it. And it's right. like, okay, but what I need to do is make sure I have that angle and that I'm repeating that angle, which is, that's really the core to sharpening is accurate repetition. Right. Yeah, so that one, so that's a, that's a 440 grit and then that is strong. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Which you can, you can take it higher. And as I say, I think, having, like thinking about that question, yeah, you're going to get a longer lasting edge. But, um, Right, it's, just a, it's a good edge and they hold. I had a guy who did um, uh, one of the nymphs and mm -hmm. he, uh, he skinned five deer before he needed an edge on it. Right. So it's like that's a, that's a good way of an edge. It'll keep that. No, I mean, that, that, that makes a lot of sense and that's the kind of information, yeah. you know. Because the, the other thing is you are normally talking or not talking, but like you're, you're watching videos from the manufacturers of the stones. Yeah. And not saying that they're doing this on purpose, but it, it's almost like they're trying to sell more stones. Right. Yeah. And so what happens is when they go through their process, you see more and more use of it. And you're like, oh, so I need all of so those. I need, yeah. Right. And, and in reality, since you're not selling any stone, you're telling me exactly what well, this is, how I do this. Yeah. And you're the best that I know at it. So like, it doesn't make any sense to, you know. Yeah. So when, when I sharpen my knives, I start at 220 grit belt mm -hmm. and I do a do the 440. So I create the edge with the 220, then I polish it out with the 440. And like my belt's a little blunt, so it's um, like the 440 is a little blunt, so it's almost polishing a little bit. Right. Uh, and then, then leather strong. So those are for, from like my production blades, that's that's all the sharpening I do. What's that sharpening system that we... It's Wicked Edge. Wicked Edge? So Wicked Edge has uh, that liquid? Right, hold on. yeah. So, just what, what is that? Do I need that? Yes. On, on, on those. Yes, because if you if you don't use if you don't use honing fluid, uh -huh. like you can feel that stone is it's yes. just full. It's, it's just full of slurry. So every time I take a pass, I'm removing 
stock from the edge of my knife, that stock has to go somewhere. Um, so if you look at it under a if you look at it under a microscope, it's really packed in there. Well, it looks like it looks like this, right? Oh. So all the all the black dust you get off your edge, if you look at it under a microscope, it's it's tiny little shavings because each little high point on that stone takes a skim off the edge of your knife. And what happens is if I don't use honing oil or, or some media to to keep this fluid, because if it's fluid, I can wipe it and clean it off the stone. What it will do is it will fill your stone. Right. Because you have peaks and valleys, and all I do is I fill up all those peaks and valleys with with shavings, basically. Right. And then, okay. then my stone is dull. Okay. So then I have to readdress the stone. Yeah. yeah, that's that stuff I said would be pretty bad if you waterboarded somebody with it. <laughs> <laughs> that wouldn't be good, no. Yeah. All those people are like, waterboarding isn't torture. Oh, I got some. Have you tried it? <laughs> <laughs> so the idea is to set up a system or set it up so that people have to drag the knife across the stone the least amount of times, because the more they do it. That's my thinking is visit the stone as little as possible to create right. an edge, because I'm clogging my stone each time. So my right. stone's going to need more maintenance. Um, I'm just walking that edge of my knife further and further back each time I sharpen. So if I'm coming in and I'm doing like 80 to 4,000 each time, I'm probably walking that edge back to a few thousand each time. So, wow. so um, I always tell people that you, you should have a people knife and then I'll obviously utility knife. Um, is, is there a metal that you suggest that would hold a uh, edge longer for utility use. So obviously the people knife is, <laughs> is should never be used. Yeah, yeah. So it should be- Just needs that edge for a, for yeah, a short like, period of time. Correct, it's like yes. it's sharp forever, right? Unless I right. use it. Right. Um, and then obviously, you know, things will happen to that knife later. But like the utility knife, they're using it on everything, Yeah. right? And so I understand, uh, dumb things like people use it on tape and then they're like my my stuff is is uh dull and it's like well if you cleaned your damn blade yeah you would probably have a sharper knife because there's gunk in that shit yeah, right. but um after a while it'll dull down uh is d2 the metal that you would want to hold to the, the the normal um i don't know what benchmade's main metals that they use the but it's a cheaper, whatever it is. Uh, is that is that something that's better for utility? It's um, you get into the old debate. <laughs> I was going to say there it's, needs to be a disclaimer. Uh, yeah. Well, it, it's <laughs> is, yeah. It, it's the old debate of do I want to have a knife that's hard to sharpen, but I don't sharpen it very often, or do I want a knife that's easy to sharpen but I have to sharpen it often? Right. So again, my opinion, um, I like super steels like the CPM crucible range, because um, you put an edge on it and it's difficult to sharpen, but I don't have to do it very often because again, if I'm looking at trying to create a heritage knife, which is gonna last through generations, I don't wanna sharpen it very often because each right. time I sharpen it, I shorten the life expectancy of that knife. But with that knife, they're, they shouldn't be using it every day. Like no. that's not exactly the, the yeah, purpose yeah. of that quality of a knife. Um, but when you talk about hard to sharpen, does that mean that somebody wouldn't be able to do it with regular well, stones? They, they need the equipment that you... No, it'll just take longer with regular stones. So if you're dealing with, um, like the hardest one I've worked with is CPMS 110, which is coming out at like 64 HRC. Okay. So it, it, takes, it takes more work to sharpen it, but you only have to like, even if you're working with it daily, you'd have to sharpen it like once a month as opposed to once a week. Right. It's okay. almost where you could almost go as far as saying on a knife like that, like an S110 or something like that, that's so hard. It really almost, you should have, unless you're really, really good at maintaining your angle every single time, you're almost better to just say, this is one of those products that I own that I send back to the manufacturer or to a professional sharpening service to sharpen because I'm not going to be as good at it. I'm probably just going to just remove product off the knife and it's just going to dull and dull and dull. Yeah. Just because it is so, like, I'm going to need, instead of like a, a D2 knife, let's say I could do 10 passes on each side. And so I can maintain my angle for 10 passes and then 10 passes going the other way. But for like something like S110, that might be 40 passes, right? So now I've yeah. got to like, now the difficulty of sharpening that knife is, is your, times four. Is right? your repetition. Yeah. So 
that then it's like, well, this knife is worth more. The steel's worth more. I'm going to send it to a professional sharpening person because then I'll get a good edge on it and I'll take less material off and I'll end up with the proper angles instead of a rounded angle or kind of the right angle and then the wrong angle and then the wrong angle. And then, yeah, because that's what happens. You do one angle and then you, I mean, what is it? Even a degree you change. Yeah. And you can see it, like you can literally see it on some knives that come back into the shop for touching up. If this is my, so if this is my center line for my edge, my bevel comes down here and then the sharpen angle kind of goes. <laughs> it's like a, they, they sharpen the stop sign. And you can kind of see edge. like the, the three different angles where they've, they've chased it around to create the edge. Wow. And then of course you're feeling for the sharp edge and you're like, that's not sharp. That's because you just pushed it over and then yeah, you well, pushed it back. And Yeah, the same thing, right? So if I've got my, if I've got my edge here, mm -hmm. And I start sharpening in here. Oh wow! Then I'm not I'm not getting that I'm not getting that edge. And is that is that why you uh, use a marker? To... Yes. Yeah. So what I what I would do is just to check I'm hitting my edge right. This is the greatest trick ever that nobody seems to understand. It's just create a tide mark, right? Because then as I pass, I know. What you hear? Here's a cheap, shitty knife that's very dull. Yeah, so, so if I just create my tide mark on here. And then. <laughs> that knife's been well abused. That is not, that's not my people knife. That's my open box pry on things and do everything that, that's my do as I say not as I do. So there you can see, I know that I've hit the edge because that black mark has gone. Whereas if I- And you're not trying to take all the marker off, you're just trying to take it at the edge. Yeah, perf perfect idea is I wanna, if I'm matching the angle, it, it would, it I would will remove the whole thing, which, right. is, which is perfect scenario. But if I'm, you know, if it's an old edge or it needs to be polished up, what I wanna do is make sure I'm removing that black from, from the edge, okay. which means that I am, I'm sharpening that edge clean. It's a great trick, but even on even on Wicked Edge, when you're not exactly sure what, yeah, just a lot of people are always asking, "What's your angle?" So this is something I always like to bring up to people. People will send us an email and they'll say, "What is your sharpened angle?" Well, that is mental masturbation that the fixed knife companies have put in people's heads, because even the finest knife makers in the world, like Javen, hand sharpen. So you don't set a jig that says this is 22.6 degrees and you go sharp you do it by hand and by eye yeah. and you then don't measure that edge. So then when somebody comes back, you have a mental idea what it is. Yeah. But if you're working with a yeah. fixed knife sharpening system that has increments of one degree each way, and then you can say, well, our edge is 20 degrees. It's a, it's a datum. It's a it, start. Yeah, it's a starting point. It's a start point. So create your tide mark, right. do 20 degrees, take a swipe and see where you are. So look where, you know, if I've got black on the edge mm -hmm. and I need more angle, mm -hmm. if I'm clear in the edge, then carry on sharpening. And then create a log, right? Just have a simple piece of paper or a little book that you go, okay, this is, you know, my, you know, whatever knife. This yeah. is my black water knife. I sharpened it at 21 degrees. And then next time you come back, you set your equipment to 21 degrees, then you can sharpen that same edge back and then you're not taking excess material off the knife. And you only need to do one or two passes for that? You, you don't need to do like five oh. or six or seven to, to make sure that the uh, angle's proper? Yeah, no, I just, so I'd, I'd do the tide mark and if you're on the wicked edge, I'd take one pass and then I'd, see, one. Okay. I'd, so I'd see where I'm at. Yeah, that, that's another one of those in, in instructionals. I've seen them like, yeah, do it 10 times and then if it's gone, then, you know, yeah. then try it yeah. again. And I'm like, I don't know any better. So I'm just like, okay. Yeah, I mean, if, yeah. I'm, <laughs> if I'm removing material, I don't want to be removing material I don't want to remove. So right. I would just do, I would do one clean pass. Mm -hmm. And even if you get like a little magnifying glass or whatever, so you can really look at that edge and then I see where my tide mark is and I adjust the suit and then I'll sharpen. And just because it's it's one angle, say it's 20 degrees perfectly on one side, that does not mean it's 20 on the no. other, right? Like, so no. it's not, it's not one of those things where you match. You have to do the exact same feel out process yeah. on the other side regardless of how yeah. it seems to be off. Yeah. I mean, and if you wanted to recut all the edges, then you'd go in, so say I desperately want to have 20 degrees on every face on my knife, and I'm going to put it in, put my tide mark on, 
and I'm going to use a more aggressive stone to, to recut. So that's when you would recut have all my face. So you come in an 80 or yeah. 120, and then you would force it into yes. that angle. I'm totally recutting. I'm not trying to follow the original edge. I'm trying to create a brand new edge of that plate. Is Which there... not a bad thing either. No, if you I mean, want not on like a scallywag knife. Wouldn't right. do it on a Grace custom no, knife because. Well, first off, I mean, edge, I, I, right? any Grace custom knife should be sent in. Like, but <laughs> like that's 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 what I tell people, but. You know, if you're going to have a utility knife, you're not going to send it in every single time. No. no. Um, but uh, on that, is there any negative to taking something? So say 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 it's uh, 20 degrees and for whatever silly reason you're like, I want a 15 degree. Yeah. Is there a, a negative to doing that? Is it going to fuck with the hardness? Is it going to, as long as you're doing it properly? With this stuff, you're not going to mess with the hardness because you're not generating heat. Okay. Um, if you have a moving belt system, uh, what was that? Oh, what was that? Uh, uh, workshop. Work. Had a workshop which basically yeah. ran like a little, like six inch by half inch belt, and then you drew the knife through, right. um, and it would burn the tip on every knife you dragged through. Wow! Because you'd come in, and then the belt would wrap around the tip, um, and people would hold it there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah you yeah. draw it through, and it's kind of like, and as soon as you get any discoloration, you trash the heat treat. Oh, wow. But so with stones, because everything is moving so slow, so you don't have friction from a moving belt, like you're not going to have issues. As soon as you go to like any moving system, like even a even a big stone wheel, if you're not cooling, friction generates heat. Heat can potentially damage the metal. Okay. The tree. Well, that with anything, it's a learned talent, right? It's not <laughs> something you're just going to pick up. I mean, this is where. This is where lack of the Boy Scouts really affects people these days because they taught you and you had to get a merit badge for sharpening a knife. And if your instructor didn't like your sharpened edge, then you went back and you practiced with a little wood block, holding the knife on the wood block to maintain that edge. They beat that into your head. Now that's not taught anymore. It's not taught that the way to sharpen a knife is to maintain that exact angle every single pass of the knife and take your time. It's not a, it's not something that takes yeah, five patience seconds. Patience and consistency yeah. Yeah. is It's key. a skill. Um, yes. That's one of the things that I will be telling everyone is you're learning a new skill. These are best practices. You may almost be not sacrificing the blade, but like. Have a practice. Yeah. yeah, yeah you, practice. You're, you're, you're definitely not going to get it right on the first time. So if you expect it to go back to factory settings on this, this first <laughs> round, it's not going to work right. out for you, yeah. you know? Um, so, but that's with any skill, like you're not yeah. yeah, repetition and yeah, and practice. Don't be afraid to practice, right? I mean, you're not going to ruin the knife per se, or at least a lesser expensive knife. I, I wouldn't practice on uh, one of your $2,500 knives, but you certainly could practice on a, you know, a $160, you yeah, know, Scallywag do claw. If you've got blunt kitchen knives, that's a great place to start, right? Go, go, to start. go through your kitchen drawer, yeah. get all your blunt knives out and sit and stone them to you yeah. till you got your angles and stuff. So. Yeah, and because that's great price because it's a long knife. Right? And they're, they're nice to sharpen as well because you're dealing with one consistent flat edge. Right. Very little curve. So it, it's a nice, it's a nice sweep. Whereas you start getting into like the MDV with recurves and stuff, then obviously there's a little more challenge because now I have to, I'm not just drawing, I'm rolling at the same time. So right. there's another element of movement you have to think about. Well, that does bring up the MDV, so. What, what is the uh, issue? So the, the top part of this is going to be normal, just like we yes. did. Down here, you can really screw up the blade if, if you try to use a flat stone on yes. that. So, uh, yeah. So if I try to use a flat stone, what I'm doing is I'm hunting that edge. So as I draw, if I pause, I'm basically cutting a, a little right angle in that edge. So as I, as I draw across here, if I'm not like super fluid with it, I'm going to be cutting like little little teeth down the edge, which is where like using a radius stone for, for coming in here is so. So I could use one of these yep. um, to, to do that? Yep. So the same thing, I would like set my angle, come in. And then I would just sharpen that area. And then if you wanted to use this one, you could sharpen the, the rest there. But I just like breaking them down into two parts because then it's not as complex a movement. And then on the back side, uh, you would just would come like in lay as, it flat? Yeah, come in as flat as possible. 
and that one I would probably try and break. That one you can you could hit and but see how how more even like going flat. See how much more complex my movement gets. Yes. Because I'm trying to I'm trying to draw up around the edge of it. That's why I like breaking it into two into and two the, sections. The very last course. part of that would be take a leather strop and leather strop or like if you've got one of these like a hone in stone just to just to knock that bar off. Okay. And you can feel it pretty quick because like you can see it just grabbing my yeah and I'm just getting the same on the other side. And if you try cutting a piece of paper with it, if it's if it's like ragged and feathering, I still have a burr. If it's a nice clean cut, then I've got rid of all the burrs. Okay. Well, correct me if I'm wrong, but sharpening the chisel grind is one of the easiest knives there is to sharpen, but also confuses people the most. Because um, one, you can't do it on a fixed knife sharpening system because typically most fixed knife sharpening systems won't pick up the, the angle that you need to do it. Yeah. So you need to do it on a stone. Yeah, I mean, Realistically, it's the same animal. Right. It's no different. It's all I'm all I'm doing is changing my changing my angle. So if here's my here's my center line on a normal edge, right? So if I've got twenty like this is this is forty degrees total, right? Twenty degrees aside. Right. Then if I do a chisel grind, all I've done is shift that center line. Right. The animal's the same. So it's. Yeah, 40 degrees on but, one side instead of 20 on each yeah. side. Yeah, so all I'm doing is I'm taking most of my stock off this side and then I'm just flashing this one. Which confuses people because when they use their fixed knife sharpening system, it goes to like 31 degrees or something like that. Yeah. And they're like, I can't get it to go deep enough. And then we've even gotten some pictures of people that have sent us <laughs> well, you'll get MDVs like, that it's their sharpened yeah. edges clear up into here because they, they've drugged the stone across trying to get the angle. And it, it's, it's a lack of understanding of how the right. how the knife is sharpened, that all the bevel is on one side. So we'll just make a blank statement that the MDV needs to be sharpened by hand on a curved stone for the radius, a flat stone for the front. It, it would be the safest way. Yeah, and if you've got a wicked edge, you can come in here at like five degrees and just... And just clean that edge. Just up, clean that edge. Which up. would be really nice, yeah. Which as well as the other thing is if like... So you wouldn't even touch the other side. You wouldn't necessarily have to touch this side depending on how you're sharpening. You could just put this up and come in at like five degrees and just do this one. And that one. might really make it sharp. Yeah, because all you're doing is, it doesn't matter which side I remove stop, all I'm trying to do is clean that infinite edge back up right. again. So you could put so this up in the wicked edge and just chase, chase that as shallow as you could. Way to do mm -hmm. it. Yeah. It'd be nice to use one of the rounded stones on the on the recurve part. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you could, I mean, you could easily like, like almost flat, right? And then just rock her up a little bit. Maybe like a degree up. Yeah, and you do here, so as I did that, here's where you're gonna to have to be careful like on, on these, yeah. because if I come here, I'm, right. gonna, I'm gonna knock my tip off and round my tip. Right. So you have to be like, this is this is nice and clean, nice and clean, I'm sharpening, I'm sharpening, and then just back off on the tip, because what I don't wanna do is, Drop off the side, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna start knocking my tip. Make off. it it'll just make it round on the tip. Yeah, I'll just comes down the I'll side. just drag it down the side by accident. I'll flatten it. Right. That's where like uh, these are really nice because you roll around and then you you can you can like roll off the stone nice and clean. So for people that want to do a really really cool job on the sharpening the MDB, then yeah, the, the curved can, stones are the way to do you it. You feel just coming off the flat. Is, oh, wow. yeah. That's really nice. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't take that much either because I used the fuck out of this one. Yeah. So that, that's what, like going back to what you were saying about do I have to start at the low grit stones? You really don't. It's kind of start at a high one and then see how much you, you have to remove to recreate your edge. Right. So using that, is there any, uh, um, uh, anything special with that? Uh, Hold the angle the same every time. So the closer I can get to this radius, mm -hmm easier to sharpen anything. So if I if I had a stone that matched this radius perfectly, I could just put it up and just drag it along it and that's that's ideal scenario. So the, the closer this radius gets the better. For 1995. <laughs> for three payments of 1995, we can make a special stone for your knife. So I would do the same thing with these, which is fix as many things as possible. Well that makes sense. So yeah, then the same thing. And these are a little tricky because I want to get right in on that corner. 
So I'm going to and just start just start chasing that. And the same thing again. I would create my tide mark, take one drag, see how close I am to to the right angle. Let's grab that. And do the same thing, just sharpen that till you roll that burr over that back side. Yeah, and yeah, then, yeah. And then use a, the flat side to do the back side, right? Or, or would you still use the... Uh, you, could, you can use this one. So yeah, so we create the tide mark. Right now I'm just guessing at the angle. Mm -hmm. You can see I'm incredibly high on that one. Mm -hmm. Now I'm starting to starting to chase her in. Like everything we were just saying about how all the angle is on one. So now I've hit right. it. You see now now I hit now I hit my angle right. So by just taking one pass and then checking, it, it's helping me like freehand that angle in so I've got it right. And that's again is everything we just talked about is all the angle is on one side. So I dropped in at where I would normally kind of think it's right, and I've almost got to double it to to get the right angle. That's like, you know. Yeah. So we get a lot of questions about that on when you're doing the putting the mark on. I've had people come back and say, "Oh well, I'm a pretty good sharpening. You know, I'm pretty good at sharpening. I don't need to do that." But yet, here's somebody that makes knives every day for last lots of years. Yeah. And you're still utilizing that mark to find that angle. So yeah. yeah. Well, every knife's different. Right? People need yeah. to drop their like, "Oh, I'm really good at doing this," and go back to the basics, which it's belt and braces, right? belt and braces, right? You, you right. back everything up to make sure you're doing it right. Right. Because you're taking material away. Yeah. Yeah. I like like I you're shortening the life you're not. Yeah. Yeah. Which is not. And then this one, you could like this, this not so nice. You could just come in on this one. And... Oh yeah. Okay. And then again, just be careful with that one because it's so easy to, to keep right. chasing. And then as I chase, I'm starting to lift my hand. Because I'm coming off, I'm trying to take the knife off, and I'm gonna I'm gonna roll that corner. Okay. Something I learned with belts because you kind of pull the knife off the belt and you you roll your tips really, really, really easy. Okay. And this is that's the two twenty. Yeah. So you would want to go to one of the higher grit to yep. finish that. Or? So I would I would just create that edge, mm -hmm. and. Here's where you can play because I could do like a nice 220 aggressive on here and then I could do a thousand on the back and then I've got micro teeth on my 220 if that makes sense. Yes. Which is something I've played with and I kind of I enjoy doing that, doing like a aggressive grit on one side and then almost a polish on the other creates like a scary edge. Awesome. Terrifying edge. Yeah. We did those originally on the dew claws and they were frightening. It's like almost a microscopic serration. It is, yeah. Yeah, you've got, uh, my thinking on it is you've got teeth on teeth, right? So, I, so right. I've got my 220 teeth, which are which are jagged, and then I come and I polish the back. So now on top of each one of these teeth, I have a a, sharp uh, edge. a polished edge. Yeah, right. so it, it like grips and cuts and grips and cuts. Yeah, it's scary. We were cutting like eighth inch leather like it was paper, like shredding it. Like, whoosh, 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 and just, cool. Yeah, that was a cool edge. Yeah. Anything else that I would need to know? Pass on, or I think that's about it. If you have any practice, like yeah, it's, it just, it's just it such a real basic, yeah, yeah, overview. I'm not trying to, it's it's but sharpening, it's one of those things that you look at it and it looks dead simple, and it is dead simple if you can repeat the process with each swipe I take down the start, right? Uh, that's where the that's where the issue comes in is already said it over and over again, but repetition of. Repetition of angle and stroke, and that's why I will fix as many elements as I can, because I know that I'm already the issue, right? It's it's me who's the issue. So, yes. so the more things that I can make me it's, not being the issue, the better. It's like shooting. It's like you yeah. are. I'm the problem. You, you're the problem. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 The gun shoots perfectly. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's you. And, and the same with sharpening. It's, it's right. me who's it's me who's messing it up. It's not the stone. It's not the knife. Right. It's not my sharpening system. It's me who's creating. Well, they don't say that enough in sharpening videos, right? They, 
they get too complicated with it and don't just simply say every swipe of the knife needs to be exactly the same angle. That's what you have to focus on. And it just seems like nobody ever says it. They're just like, oh, you use 220 and then you use, you know, 440 and then you go up to a thousand and you get this edge and look how shiny that is. And they make it look easy, just like Gordon Ramsay doing a, yeah. well, doing a kitchen knife, right? right? I mean, yeah, they're, they're not wrong. They're just missing, they're just they're missing, missing the, the most important, important parts of yeah. teaching, yeah. Right. Which, is, which is this is what you need to focus on. Is, right. And even if you had, so we talked about like this one, even if you're, even if you're learning, like set your angle, take a swipe, set your angle again, take a swipe, set your angle again and you feel it. so you're feeling how the angle fits so you're creating that neural pathway muscle memory to to be able to repeat the process over and over again okay. yeah that's cool thank you that'll help man that'll, that'll really help well and it's like recurves are not difficult to sharpen if you have the right tools which which is a uh, something around it okay i've told probably 600 people in the last year that there's thousands of videos online on how to sharpen a chisel grind and there are but and i've seen some very good ones because the first chisel grind i ever owned was way before scallywag and gray's custom and i was like i think i know how to sharpen this but youtube exists so I'll, I'll youtube it and some of them were confusing some of them were just dead simple but none of them touched base on the basic principle of the angle's got to be the same each time and the angle needs to match the angle that's <laughs> existing on the knife as close as possible yeah. so we're not wasting material of the knife and shorting the life it drives me crazy when like literally we'll ship an mvv to somebody and then two or three days later i'll get an email from them and they'll say how do i sharpen the knife well it shouldn't even be in your head yet like why are you people have this thing where they like to put their own edge on the knife and and it's like, is the knife sharp enough to do what the job it is intended to do? Yes, of course it is, because it's a factory edge. Why are you wanting to, it'd be like, it'd be like taking your clean oil out of your engine and putting dirty oil in because it's thinner and it causes the engine to run better. And I did the oil change. Right, exactly. I put that in. Right? Exactly, yeah. Yeah, so it, it, it makes no sense. But so the less you sharpen your knife, the longer your knife will last. So there's no reason to, to pre-sharpen a knife. Like you don't need to put your edge on it. Just think you're just adding wear to the knife. So if it needs to be sharpened, sharpen it. But if it doesn't need to be sharpened, don't sharpen it. If it's not broken, don't fix it. It all goes down to that. And for that, again, like repeating it, I sharpen as little as possible. Right. So remove as minimal amount of material as I can to create the edge I want. I don't want to be like running through all my stones. And it's almost, you almost want to work backwards and start a high stone and see if that creates your edge. And if you're struggling to remove stock, then go backwards as opposed to starting low and going up. Right. Instead of automatically starting at 220 <coughs> and removing a whole bunch of material yeah, and then yeah. going, having to, then having to go through the grids. Yeah. A uh, 800 grit stone or even a 600 grit stone would, could clean up your problem yeah, yeah. right now. Yeah, you may just have And then you're done. Time. Yeah, what you're trying to do is just knock that. There's a tiny, tiny flat where it's been worked. And all you're trying to do is just, just shave that off. Well, it doesn't hurt to look at the edge with a magnifying glass either, does no. it? To actually see what's going on. Well, light as well is, uh, is really useful because if I'm looking at flats, if I can get under a light and then I roll the blade backwards and forwards, if I start seeing reflection on the edge, it'll show me where my flats are. Right. That makes good so, sense. So good light on, on your edge and then roll it backwards and forwards and you can, like when I'm sharpening in the shop, I've got a light that shines down and it'll show me where I haven't, haven't fully cleaned up because I'll see the flats. Since I have you here, there are um, people that ask to do this. First off, I don't, I don't like having a double-edged blade that's this small in my hands. I just feel like I'm, I'm going to touch it. Yeah. Right. Um, but the thing is, is that I've gotten questions on, hey, can I sharpen this top end? And you know, so my question to you is the. The repeat of that question, but more importantly, is that advised? Because now what we're gonna, we're it's it's not sharp, and we're trying to make an angle. So you're going to be taking a lot of material off yeah. to, to try to hit that angle. Yeah. Um, 
can you talk a little bit about that and your your thoughts? So if I if if you had to do if it, I had to because it's not designed to be sharpened in the first place, right? Because your your bevel angle is almost at the angle you'd want to sharpen. So you're, you're going to be doing this. So if I was going to sharpen this one, I would do all my grinding from the back edge. Okay. I wouldn't touch this edge. And I would try to make a, a zero grind in here. Um, just because the issue you have is when you're... It's just a bevel angle and a flat issue. So we also have like a like a 40 thou land on there, just to, because that creates support coming up to the tip. Right. So normally, um, if you think about your bevel angles, like I'm, I, I do most of my knives, I'm between uh, six and four degrees on each side. So we come down the center line. So this for me is like between six degrees and four degrees. Little, and if you come less than four degrees, you're getting into like kitchen knife where you, you want that super, super slim profile, but you're, you're sacrificing strength for other, other uses. Which then, then I'll leave like a, between a 10 and a, a five thou land in here to sharpen, which means when I come in with like my 20 degrees, I get like that nice little, right? I get like that nice, that nice clean, tidy edge, right? So if I start coming up, and now I'm looking at like 12 degrees with a 40 thou land in here, my sharpen angle is gonna end up doing this and just, you're gonna end up with, like you said, you get like these huge grinds on there. Yeah. Um, so you can, but it's not designed to be sharpened. Right. Like if you want a double edge, then you really want the same angle bevels on both sides, right. same lands on both sides, because then you can create a you can and create then, a decent edge, whereas you're not going to create a decent edge trying to sharpen. Right. So the answer is don't no. <laughs> you can resounding no. Just because you can doesn't mean you should. Exactly. <laughs> so it needs to be built into the original design. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Not go. Oh, this looks thin enough. I I can sharp. Yeah, you'll just ruin your knife. Yes. Then. Yeah. yeah, and you probably get the because somebody will put it on a grinder because to remove that much stock, you're going to get frustrated. So you're going to yeah. want to speed the process up, which means you're going to move stuff faster. And then you're going to get a great heat. And then, then you're going to trash your tip. <laughs> and then your tip's going to break off when you drop it in the dirt. And you're yeah. going to be like, the tip broke off in my pocket while well, nobody was doing anything to it. This is warranty. Yeah. I, you would not believe how often that happens. I was carrying my knife, and the tip just popped off. I'm like, so I always call it the magic break and then they get upset because they're like, you're I, I, saying I'm full of shit. I'm like, yes, I'm saying you're full of shit. I, I always enjoy the, why isn't it double edged? Because I didn't want it double edged. Right. But, <laughs> but then it goes, right. but this knife is. I was like, then buy that knife. Yeah, yeah then exactly. buy that knife. Yeah. yeah. That's why there's lots of knives. Yeah. Like, not every knife. There's no such thing as one knife that meets every need because oh. otherwise there wouldn't be a thousand, 10,000 different knife makers. We'd all be making the same knife. Everybody make the same knife, yeah. Like, yeah. Cool. There's nothing like that in the world. You know people are gonna, Until late if, if we do end up using any of this video, which is unlikely, they're gonna see those things in the background and they're gonna be like, what are those? And we're gonna get 10,000 questions of what, what is that? What, are those? what so is that? What, are those what is that goober stuff on? <laughs> Why are those knives green? I want a green one. What's knife? in that box? <laughs> <laughs> I want a green one, yeah. I want a green one with white boogery looking stuff on the box. <laughs> clay. Why, why is that clay? Those are those secret knives that they make. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yes, for $10,000, you too can have a green knife. <laughs> yes. It's only green for a little bit because then, really, <laughs> then it goes really black. Then it gets really black, yeah. <laughs> and then you'd have to smell it. If, if you want a green one, you'd have to come during the process of putting the green on because that's hideous. Yeah, there's nothing fun about that at all. Yeah, that's a... Like, I've had this one for so long. <laughs> you, <laughs> you can see how, see how it just gets full because I get lazy sometimes and like if I'm sharpening a drill or just want to grind something quick, that one goes up in the vice, but... Yeah, it needs redressing. Another thought about stones, especially with the radius ones, um, is be, be consistent in 
wearing the stone because when I work a stone, uh, I'm removing part of the stone all the time. Okay. Like that's part of why it, it's wet. Part of why you use honing fluid is to is to keep um, to keep the slurry from building up in the stone, but also to let like the surface break down a little bit. So so I'm removing grit by and then introducing fresh grit, which keeps the stone sharp. So if I just if I just work one area, I'm going to create a, a divot in my stone. So the bigger area of my stone that I work, I'm going to consistently wear my stone. And you always want to be pulling towards the edge, right? Like that's, is, or it doesn't matter if you're pushing against the... I don't think it matters. Um, I like to draw towards me so the edge is going this way because it's easier for me to dismount. Okay. Whereas if I'm pushing in and I dismount, I, I stand a chance of dragging that edge. Okay, so that, that the reason... Just, just a that's, personal choice thing. Yeah, I was watching you and the, I never saw you go in the other direction, yeah. so... I just assumed that that was, so that's the reason. It's, yeah. it's not the fact that it won't sharpen no. the blade, it's just that. No. For me, it, it's a control thing because if I pull in this way, and I think of it when, I, when I'm grinding on the, I'm sharpening on the belts, my belt is always running like away from the edge because it makes it so much easier to dismount. So if I'm pulling this way, I just have to roll the knife up to dismount. And so I'm pushing, as I roll, I can grab that edge and start knocking it flat. And again, it's just a knowing what I'm good at and knowing what I'm not good at. I know that this way I can control the edge coming off the stone, whereas this way I'm, I'm like diving into the stone. Right. Okay. No, that makes sense. No, I... both, both will work. Personal <clears throat> preference thing. Yeah, because on that wicked edge, sometimes on the, their instructional, they're, they're like rubbing straight up and down yeah. on it. And I guess under that thought process, it doesn't really matter. But, but like you're going out towards the edge, you're coming back on it. You're going up and down yeah, on yeah. it. It's like so. Is there is there any? Uh, do, do you just want to keep a consistent uh, direction? Yeah. Or, or does it even just I, make sure you finish in the same direction? Is that that? Uh, I don't really. It doesn't. It doesn't really matter too much. Like, cause cause I'm just creating those teeth. I know you see. People draw like a straight across. Which in in my mind. You like you create in like a very flimsy edge because if we look at our so we talked about like we're creating teeth yes which means i'm drawing i'm drawing in this direction across my stone right okay so here's my so here's my direction if i draw in this direction what i do is i create my teeth in this direction which means that this edge if we look at it in a cross section uh has the potential to have a v in it Right on a, on a very small level, which means that this edge can break out easy. Okay. So I don't. That's my, again. I'm sure there's somebody out there who will have a different opinion, and I may well be wrong. But that's so. If I'm just drawing here, then all, all my teeth are going in this direction, which in my in my mind I can leave myself a very very thin weak edge. It may may right. be very strong for a moment, but the, the chance of that cracking out, as opposed to my teeth running. Right. This and direction. That's why you go. Yeah, that's that's why I kind of draw in this direction. Okay. So we can, we create a little bit of an angle because we have to move the knife right. Yes. To, to cr across that edge. But yeah, I don't do this. Okay. I, I just in my, in my thought process, it's actually you <clears throat> create me a very sharp edge, but not not as strong. Yeah, and all this is is your best practices. Yes. That, that, that's that's all I want. Yes. Uh, I'm, not, yes. I'm not asking for all the variations to do it. Yeah. Because I think that's what happens when uh, things get confusing. Yeah. Because what happens is people go, well, you can do this, and you can do this, and you can do this. And it's like, well, you're not supposed to do all of them at right. once. Pick, pick one. Yes, and right. get, get really good at it. And this is what <laughs> I know has worked for me. Okay. Yeah. Even if you're right as rain, Somebody's if gonna... you put it on the internet... <laughs> Well, somebody's going to have a different way of doing it, sure. which achieves the same result. Yeah, so, exactly. so neither are wrong. And if that just, works, great. Yeah. yeah, it's it's just choose your method and then then fine tune them and, and become good at that method. But it is the internet. Even if yeah. even if there was actually only one exact way to do it, <laughs> so, and that was the only way to do it, and and you were God's gift expert at doing said thing, and you made that statement, somebody would tell you you were wrong. Yeah, of course. Because they've done it better. Even though they've only done it twice. <laughs> <laughs> Your chokes don't work that way because you can get out of it that Put way. Put something on, online and then somebody will argue and I'm like, and you fight the urge to go, 
who are you? Yes. Like, where did you come from? Like, well, what rock did you come up with? It, it feels like a super arrogant statement to go, why are you arguing with me? But at the same time, it's just like, I want to know who this person is. This person yeah. must be amazing because <laughs> if, this if is 30 years of information it, yeah. that I've, I've accumulated. You must be a and, hidden master. And you're just acting like it's complete dog shit. <laughs> <laughs> It was like the guy making the comment on your wrist grab that they, yeah. they, they could just get right out of that. I'm like, have you ever, have you, you've yeah. never been grabbed by Mike before. <laughs> He's never grabbed a hold of you before because all of a sudden you have a full new understanding. It's like of, out of the thousands of people I've trained, you don't think somebody was like, oh, I think I can, well, can try that. <laughs> <laughs> never once. And, and you're always willing to say, go ahead and try that. Yeah, let's test it out. Yeah, yeah. Let's, yeah. let's see if that works. If it does, I'll adopt it. Oh, that didn't work. Sorry. Oh, did that hurt? It's like, this is how I hold people down. How do you know? Because I hold bull down. Because <laughs> yeah. I hold people down. Because <laughs> I hold people down that are huge, like Sasquatch size. Yeah. And it works really well. And, it, and he gets frustrated. <laughs> if you can hold a bull down, you can. Uh, yeah. That, that man is. <laughs> that man is not of this earth. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny, man. I've seen him one hand bench press people off of him. Like, oh, there's absolutely just throw nothing. Them yeah, yeah. People are like, how do you do it? I was like, I don't let him do that to me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't put all my weight on his one hand. Like, what? <laughs> you know, it's easier said than done. But like, yeah, yeah. yeah. I give him other options to worry about. That's funny. Oh, that's cool, man. Thanks, dude. Oh, no, no it, it really helped because people really have. I mean, honestly, like in the last week, we've probably had ten requests of. Can you please do a video on how to sharpen the MVP? Yeah. And I get and it. I they get, they yeah. want they want something from us. Yeah. Sure, but sure. That, that's that's one you of the things. It's yeah. like, you know, yeah. you designed the knife, mm -hmm. you know, you guys made the knife. Like Well, let's face how, it, the reality of it is is the reason we haven't done it is because all of our edges are done at the factory. Right. We don't physically do it. I don't consider myself a knife sharpening expert. That's Jaden. Right. right. Yeah, and then and so until I we need... can get to the original designer of the knife and the person that actually physically makes you yeah. know, knives that are well above ten thousand dollars on a daily basis. Who am I to say how to do it? Like, right. go look at it. There's yeah, there, and, there's and good ways to do it, but I'm not going to be the one. To and that's it. exactly why I wanted you to tell me how to do this yeah. because I give you all my knives to sharpen. <laughs> right. right? So <laughs> right. I sharpen this. I need to go cut something. Yeah. You know, but that's that's where that information comes from. Yeah. You know, and so I, I get it. I, I understand. Um, yeah, I mean it's. Uh, the MDB, is it trickier to sharpen than a full? Yeah, absolutely. But with the right tools and a little practice, it's not difficult enough to sharpen. Right. Yeah, it could be a literally a 10 minute process. Yeah, right? yeah. Well, we, we just did it on the, we did yeah. it on a, on a ponies, pony rod, right? Yeah. You can just chase that back edge and do it quickly. And yeah, you've yeah. got a sharp knife again. Yeah, and then, then there there is also the conversation of what you're using the edge for, right? So, yes. like, like, uh, it, there's no real reason for you to have it super razor sharp because what are you using that knife for? You're using it out of context yeah. or you're trying to get an edge or you're trying to find a purpose for it that it's not designed for. Yeah. You know, um, if it's dull, then obviously sharpen it. But it's designed for very specific things and you don't need a very sharp or razor. Has, has like, split exactly. Yeah. People you know. do get confused about that because they, they want to put a polished razor edge on their knife. Like it doesn't correct me if I'm wrong, but what I always tell them is you didn't buy a shaver because if you've ever actually been to a barber that had a straight razor shave, every single time before they do it, they, they strop the knife, they sharpen the knife, and some of them will even put it on a stone first. Yeah, so um, you, you're getting back to... Getting back to edge angle. Right? Yeah, you're getting back to edge angle, right? So if I want... I mean, if you look at a razor, like a, a true, you've got like an incredible hollow grind Right, that comes into a flat back edge. Right. So you're getting like this infinite thin edge on a razor. Right. Um, great for shaving, but you have to sharpen it each time because this is so thin, you're getting micro, micro edges are breaking out the whole time. Right. So the sharper I get, the less life I'm going to get out of that edge just because I've got such a thin section up on it. Mm -hmm. right? Whereas you look at an ax for splitting, right? And we've got like this, <laughs> this beefy angle, but it will stay there for years without you having to touch it up. Right. So, so we we're, we're dealing with between like a razor and an axe edge, depending on application of what we're doing. Right. Well, I think a lot of people don't understand that. Well, I think when people think of a knife, they think that the primary bevel on the knife that makes up the edge of the knife is actually the edge, and it's not. 
and you drew it earlier, but draw that again because you have your bevels and then you have what starts as a land or a flat. Yeah, yeah. So and then you have a secondary bevel. That's where you get into like uh, katanas and things, which is zero grind. And people love zero right. grind as well, right? Which is beautiful because you can do like your nice eight degree bevels and come into a Right. Coming to an infinite point on your bevel angles, which is Just great two because you're coming together. Yeah, you have plenty of stock in behind, which gives like a, a sword lots and lots of support behind that edge. Now, sharpening it becomes tricky because I'm actually polishing the, the full bevel on it e each time I come to it. Unbelievable. Whereas, let's say if this is a center line, when I design, so this is, this would be pre sharpened. Right. Okay. And people don't realize that, that there's actually a secondary angle yes. on the edge itself yes. from the bevel of the knife. Yeah, so say the, these are these are four degrees aside, right? Which And then I, I'll leave like a 0 0.01 land on that, which, which gives me like meat behind the edge. Because if I try doing four degrees to to a zero grind, it's awesome. It's going to be sharp for about 10 minutes and I'm going to, I'm going to start cracking <laughs> right. the edges out. Right. So I create this and then I come in. Here is where my here is where my sharpen angle will be inside the bevels. Right, and that's I, I don't think a lot of people actually realize that. I don't know that I realized it before I started watching you make knives. Is that you know you just think that okay, well I'm looking at my knife and there's a bevel there and it's yeah. sharp at the end. Yeah, that's yeah. not a common sense thing. When right, look at it and there is literally yeah. a secondary angle, <clears throat> which is that angle, and yeah. that angle is typically put on by hand by the knife maker yep. who's sharpening it or the factory. So, so unless somebody explains it to you in this fashion, draws it out for you, you're seeing the end result of everything yes. when, when you pull out your knife. So your knife is the end process, mm -hmm. is perfect. Mm -hmm. But if you were to make a knife, create a knife off of one of these blocks, right? The, the thing is, is that, you know, you're gonna have to make that secondary Angle. You're going to have to create your, your sharpened edge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's the last, and once everything is assembled and marked and ready to go, it's the last thing I do is sharpen. Right. Here's a good example. I've been carrying that black water. Look how dirty it is. It's really ugly and dirty. It's got sticky stuff on it and silicone. And, and I use it, and I've broken the tip off of it because I do things I shouldn't do. But when Javen resharpens this for me, I don't typically can't shave with it. I can't, I can't certainly can't shave my face. Because then the way I use this knife, that edge would get dull instantly because I've got such a thin edge on it. He'll put a, what we like to call a working edge yeah. on, which is not a razor edge, probably won't shave hair really super well, but I could cut boxes, I can cut rope, I can cut, you know, I can do wire. And if I decide that, oh, I don't have my cutters with me and I want to strip insulation off of a wire, I could get away with it because the edge is not so weak then right. that I'm not taking... I'm not hurting the edge by doing so. And I use that all the time. I mean, and there's really no nicks in this edge. I mean, I was just stripping electrical wire with it last night. Just, just like having a <clears throat> knife with a purpose, a purpose driven tool. Yes. Your edge is also purposely designed. Yes. Like, you know. And that's what I use that knife for. I don't take my MDV out and do things with it because that's my, you make fun of it, but in layman's terms, that's my defensive knife. That yeah. knife might need to save my life. This is, in that case, it, this is my backup knife. At that it point. is meant for people or animals, like right. some, for, you know, a purpose of defense. You right. know, I'm that, saving your life. That's yeah. why I call them people knives. Like, yeah. that's, that's the only reason I would use it. Uh, <clears throat> I have a utility knife on me that, that I would use that for. Which is a weird concept because most people are like, I've never thought about carrying two knives. Why would I want to? Oh, well, maybe it's a good idea. Now I've got a knife for the specific purpose that I bought it for right. of defending myself. You know, I just want to get an ice cream cone and get back home, yeah. but now I've been well, accosted. Once, once you explain it, it makes a lot of <clears> sense. <throat> if I have a utility knife that I pull out and I've been using it for utility purposes, it may not cut. And My that may be the one. only cut that I got. Yeah. That entire mm -hmm. defensive you know, scenario. And so I want a blade that I have not used for anything else because I know that it has the highest possibility of doing the damage I need it to do at that moment. And the utility knife is just, you know, utility if it knife. doesn't cut through something, you're like, oh, I need to go sharpen it. Okay. And it won't kill you. Right, right. <laughs> that, that, <clears throat> that penalty is not that high. It's just a little bit of time. A defensive knife or a fighting knife, there's a huge penalty if your knife doesn't 
work. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah, big penalty. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed that. That was a fairly long conversation uh, between uh, me, Javen, and Craig. There was a number of questions that we threw at him, and because he is a master of his craft, he easily answered them. So if you have any other questions, then obviously shoot them over to us. Uh, easiest way to get a hold of me is content at eliteu.com. Once again, that is the email. For the purpose of simulating everything that we did on that uh, conversation, I want to show you what I brought to him. Um, so that you can purchase these. I purchased all of this crap on uh, Amazon. So that's the brand. It's not that I'm pushing this brand. It's just that I wanted to, I uh, went on Amazon. I tried to find something that was decent. These are ceramic. So do not drop them. I made that mistake and it snapped in half. So, um, you know, you be careful with them. This white version, uh, and they have a uh, black colored one. They are different grits, okay? So I believe that this is a finer grit. Um, this is more coarse, and it just depends on what the purpose is. I believe this is more for honing, and then this uh, is going to be a little bit more uh, to sharpen if you have more um, chips in the blade or whatever. And so uh, most people are only going to need this one. Remember what Javen was talking about. Do not sharpen your blade all the time. You're going to reduce the uh, life of that blade. And so this is probably the... Uh, way to sharpen that you're not going to need that much skill in. And it's real quick. The uh, sharpening stones that I use, I had three of them when I went to go see Javen. I'm just going to pull only one of these things out. This is a thousand grit. You probably only need one of those. I did have three different ones as I progressed. You watched uh, the video, so you know what he said about that. The big part about this, the, the feature that you're looking for is this rounded uh, or curved stone. You can do the flat edge, obviously, as you know, for the majority of your blades, but specifically for the inside of this you want to make sure that you are using something that is rounded it is the reason why this will still work especially if you use it the same way javen told you so um look for these uh if you want to have them they are uh small enough for you to carry with you so you can throw this into a pack remember to place this into water for about 10 15 minutes um and then go to sharpening it, okay? So it'll just increase the life of the stone. You won't get all that grit directly inside of that uh, or what have you. So I just wanted to kind of point all that out. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I hope that it answered your questions on how to sharpen them. Um, remember, sharpening knives is an art. The thing is, is that you are going to it's it's skill so you're gonna have to practice it a lot you are going to uh have some trial and error on it but what we wanted to do is provide you with something that at a beginner skill level you could jump into and for those that have some uh advanced knowledge how to go from there so i hope to see you guys in the next video thanks for watching